And welcome to a new edition of Woodsy's Club Tour. And, mate, this is actually a really exciting one for me. It's one of the greats, Ronnie the Cougar Palmer. How you going, big fella? I'm going real good, thanks, mate. So, and lovely to see you again. I remember always... being with you in the early days of Origin and so on. <laughs> you and your silly mate, Clem. But that oh, was yes. Yeah, oh, mate. You ought to have a good time. And cool. as you say, it's always a good time, mate. Um, what, what was you saying? What time is it, Ronnie? Uh, the time of your life. Exactly right. And it was. Those, those times were. I remember... At the time, with those origins, you look back and you're sort of like, oh, it was good fun. But then all the old boys used to say, mate, this will be done in a couple of years. And you look back and reflect and go, 100%. Look what we had here. We we had a magic time. And even before yours was even better. Oh. But um, no, origins are a very special time, mate, as you know. And if you're not going to enjoy it, you'll never enjoy right, it. Exactly right. I'm just so, I envy the boys in origin camps now. Yeah. But let's get to you. A lot of people, obviously, you had the, the successful career as a trainer, a yep. high performance. Now, mate, you were a rugby league player before, and you played, what, 35 games for Bowman Tigers? Yes, I did, yes. Yeah. So in how the, were you 70s, a yeah. local boy there? I was. The funny part about it is, uh, well, gee, I was, went to a rugby union school, but yeah. I did play a lot of my junior footy in, in the Balmain district. What school was that? I went to Meadowbank Boys High. Oh, okay, yep. And uh, we ended up, I ended up playing in the South Coast Rugby Union t- yeah, team yeah, at the yep. time. And then I went up for a lazy run around just after fi- school had finished to see if we'd go any good in the Rugby Union. Yep. And I ended up playing the last eight games in first grade at um, Eastwood Rugby Union. So I, I, for all intents and purposes, I thought, oh, I'll roll around with Rugby Union. <laughs> but then there was a couple of fellows from uh, league there watching. And ironically, it was a fellow from Parramatta. He yeah. said, come have a trial. So I went to have a bit of a trial with Para. I get out at the old Cumberland Oval before, way before Cumberland Oval and the old Cumberland Oval before they burnt the stands down. <laughs> so I went out there to have a trial. And lo and behold, I'm waiting for the Parramatta bloke to come and see me. No one's seen me. Really? And we're playing the Tigers. So it was a trial against the Tigers. Tigers. So there's blokes walking in I used to play with at the gym. They said, what are you doing? I'm having a trial with Para. I'll see you out there. You know, yeah. Happened, happened, didn't know. And finally, at the end, this bloke said, well, it doesn't look like they're coming. Come out of the run with us. No way. So I went across the tunnel. Wow. Had a run with the Tigers. Ended up playing first grade with Arthur Beetson in the trial that <sighs> afternoon. How ironic. And did you know I... much about Artie Beetson? Like, were you a big footy nut? Oh, oh yeah. Always. Yeah. But the fellow next door to where I lived um, was a mad footy nut. We used to go at the cricket ground at the MA Noble stand and yeah. watch the Tigers when I was a real little yeah, fight. Yeah. Yeah. So I've loved the Tigers all the time, mate. Oh, it's crazy, isn't it? It's funny and like, we'll obviously get back to it, but you finished off at the Tigers so many years later being a, you know, a trainer there. Full circle, yeah. Mate, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But, well, you're actually a legend, not just on rugby league, but at my old school as well. You're a PE teacher at Holy Cross Ride too, weren't you? I was. So were you playing first grade at the same time you were a PE teacher? Uh, yes, I was. I started, well... I was, uh, when was, I was 21 when I first started playing with the Tigers yep. and I, well, I was a late starter in teaching. Mm-hmm. I went to teacher's college when I was 26 and finally did my first teaching when I was 28. Okay. Yep. So I got to, um, uh, Holy, no, oh, yeah, I got to Holy Cross College, uh, in 1982 Yep. and I was still running around, but I was running around with Rod Eastwood there. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And they're, they're a pretty big club, successful club as well. They were outstanding. Yeah. Right? They won so many premierships and all the uh, fellows who, you know, had run their race in, yep. in the NRL or whatever it was, first grade in those days. Yeah. Um, they ended up at Ryde right Eastwood or any of those big second division teams. Yeah. Ah, good. Yeah. Because they, I remember when I was at Tigers, we actually did a lot of our recovery days. That they were still involved. They were affiliated with yep. West Tigers. Yep. So it was a huge club. How did Ronnie Palmer get into become a trainer? Obviously, what, you played five, six years with the Bowman Tigers? Uh, five years, yeah. Five yep. years. How did you obviously move? Because it's only, that's a, like back then, a bit of a short career, 35 yep. games. What what made you get into the, the fitness side of things? Well, it was always part of my brief, mate. And uh, it was sort of uh, nothing that I'd planned to happen. But when yep. I was playing at the Tigers, as you probably remember in those days, we only trained Tuesday, Thursday night, <laughs> played Saturday, and that was it. So I'd take it on myself on a Monday to go to the Old Bowman Leagues Club. Yep. And do a bit of training and finish off with a sauna and all that. And lo and behold, a few of the players started to join you. And all of a sudden, we'd have about 15 fellows on a Monday yeah. night yeah. doing it. So uh, when I finished with um, rugby league, because uh, I played with Rod Eastwood until I was 33. Yep. And I did the ACL, so I thought, ah, that's about time. About yeah, time yeah. to give it away. 
So um, I got offered a job to do them. So mm -hmm. I, I just, it was just a natural progression. Yep. But then I started uh, doing uh, masses in human movement at Sydney Uni. Okay, yep. Uh, so I was pretty well tied up with doing studies and stuff. But um, Tim Sheens' brother, Bobby Sheens, yeah. said, uh, mate, I've got a job. Would you like to come and train the roosters? Oh, wow. And uh, I said, why not? So I went over there, but I had four kids at the time. Okay, yep. I'm teaching at Holy Cross College, and now I'm going to try and train the Roosters. Yep. But at that time, Bucha was the coach. Yep. Russell Fairfax was assistant, and they just convinced me to do it. They said, yeah, you're going to train two nights a week, and that's how I got into it, mate. So, so essentially, I did have a PE background, but as a PE teacher and yep. that sort of thing. So, so, so it's so funny because you said that that trial match against, when you're supposed to be for Parra, you go to Tigers, you play with Artie Beetson, He's the coach of the Roosters when you first get your opportunity. Yep. So that was straight in the first grade, just straight from, from the opportunity from Bob Sheens. From from Bobby Sheens, straight to, to, to train first grade. I've never trained first grade in my life. So when you rock in, like, are you thinking, like, what have I got to come up with? Or like, because the training's completely different back in those days compared. It, yeah, yeah, it was. But I thought, I had, like I said, mate, I had a little bit in my armory because I was a PE teacher. Yep. And I realized that um, they were a really good bunch of fellows, but yep. they really hadn't had too much um physical training. Yeah. So I really took it upon myself. I spoke to Artie and we, we, I think we went from, they were 13th or something that year and we were one off the grand final oh, that wow. year. In the 87 it was. Okay. And then where, where were they based at for that? Back we in the day? mainly, we did uh, at the old sports ground. Yep. Um, and most of the training was done around the instance of ES Marks Field and yep. any, any of the fields we could get. That's the uh, athletics track there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we also trained at Henson Park. Uh, oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They're still using the Henson because that's affiliated with Cronulla now. Yeah. 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 So obviously you've, you've had some, you know, some players and coaches come through. How was it when Gus first got there? Well, he was... Gus is Gus, as we all know, and well, he's, people, people often say to me... You know, I was about to say, can you give us an insight into Gus? Because a lot of us just see that big, you know, the, the big pre-match talks and yeah, yeah. You know, those lot of things. What's the real Gussy? Well, we, to, to put it in a, in a nutshell, mate, he's the complete package, in my view. Yep. I mean, I've had some really outstanding coaches. Yep. And the other day, just to a quick aside, Aaron, I was thinking, what am I calling you, Aaron? For Woodsy, I was thinking... <laughs> <laughs> mate, you can call me whatever you want, mate. <laughs> I was thinking the other day... I was doing a bit, putting together a bit of a resume, you know, because I might need to do stuff. And I've worked with over 50 coaches. Really? And wow. some of them, some of the current ones are still coaching. There's probably eight or 10 of them still coaching yep. that I've either worked with as a trainer mm -hmm. or I've actually trained them as a player. Oh, yeah. So if you take a break like Ivan, for example, he was playing at the Roosters when I first started there. So, but anyway, let's get back. That was early 90s too, wasn't it? That was. Yep. I get back to Gus. Gus is, um, he's, he and I have always had a great association. Yep. Um, he's, he's got, a, as we all know, a very special talent. Oh. Um, he, as I said, because he's the complete package, yep. he knows the game inside out. Mm -hmm. He's a great orator. He can motivate people. Um, and he's just, just a special, special person. What, what would his best attribute be? Especially so... He comes to the Roosters. What's the first thing that he realised that he's got to fix? Well, he was pretty smart, as we all know. Yep. So he bought Matty Singh mm -hmm. and he bought a fellow called Brad Fittler. Mm -hmm. So when a he, first, <laughs> when he <laughs> first got to the Roosters, I think it was 94, yep. he bought those two fellows in. And we just decided to uh, uh, train them really hard yep. and, and work hard on them. Um, work around those two fellows who are you know, outstanding players. Yep. We had a good bunch of fellows there already. Um, but that was about it. So I and think. So, so who was in that side already? Like the Goulet? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, Salvatore. Salvatore, yep. And a whole lot of those. So in the early nineties, but we've sort of played above our, our, our weight. Yeah. Um, Mark Murray come in. Yes. And at one stage there, we were pretty limited in players. Yep. But what the game plan there was just get to the 40 and kick. Yeah. And lo and behold, mate. Halfway through the year, we're coming second on the competition wow. by just doing simple footy that way. But we had a whole lot of um, Dave Trewella and all those yep. sort of fellows were playing at the time. Um, Michael McLean and mm -hmm. you know, a couple of reps from Queensland. Yeah, yep. So, yeah, we had some good players rolling around. Yep. Um, but when Gus came in, it was a, a different, I suppose it was the next breed of players coming through. Yeah. But um, like I said, he just worked with worked his magic and away they went. Oh, he's a freak at what he does. And yeah. like, 
you say a man, a motivator. I used to love the pre-origin talks on, on Channel 9. Like, he was just, just to give you goosebumps. Yep. yep. And obviously... See, that with the Victoria, the butt in there, was, it was yep. funny about the um, the motivation. I remember the chief used to say in um, origin camps, and, you know, he'd say, Gus would always have a night story for yep. us, a bedtime story. Like, like, night, like every night? Most nights. Oh, right. And one night, he didn't have one. And chief stood up and said, hey, Gus. What about our bedtime story? <laughs> <laughs> that was just exactly the way it was. He always had a good yarn for yep. you, you know. So. It's funny. I've I've spoken to people when he does lunches, like they they won't ask him what he needs to say. They just go, "Mate, you've got forty five minutes, or you've got thirty minutes." And he, they reckon, from you know, right, as soon as that thirty minutes comes, boom, he's done. Like oh. he's just got a brain that's phenomenal. He used to come into the sheds mate, at half time. And he wouldn't have a clipboard, wouldn't have nothing. And he quoted all the stats of the half first half. Oh, yeah. And you'd go and check them, not diligently, but you yep. might reflect on what, what stats were in the first half. Yeah. He's pretty well spot on. Mate, he's, he's a freak. <laughs> and He's like a computer in his brain, isn't he? One of the few fellas, and you, you know the game well, you've played all your life. Yep. When you're watching a game, sometimes you have to sort of concentrate on the attack or concentrate mm. on the defence. He could see what both... We're doing it at the same time. Crazy. There's only a handful of blokes can do that. Yep. Your likes of Andrew Johns, Brad Fittlers. Yep. There's not too many. Not well, that's that I know. Um, obviously, here at the Roosters, the relationship with Nicky Politis, was he as, as big of a factor back then as what he was now? Yes. Because yes. he was the first to sponsor the jersey, wasn't he? He was, mate. He, I think it was 1974 he yep. started. Um, but Nick has always been an, an amazing human, mm -hmm. um, a great person for everybody at the club. Yep. He lives and breathes um, the Roosters. You know, he's he's not only is he leader there, but he's I guess probably one of their biggest fans as well. Oh, yeah, and always has been. Um, but he's a he's a special person, and he's been there the whole time. He's gone for a, a, an amazing ride, mm -hmm. and um, they've got the they're just desserts. I think. Well, there's one thing you can't knock the bloke. He's been there, like you said, from start to finish. Whether it's you know they're up the top, he's been through rebuilds. He's yep. been through you know great, great rosters and. Yep. One I'd love to talk to you about is the Ricky Stewart. You yes. know, he took a pun on Ricky. Net, like he was obviously got him. I think he got him from reserve grade at Bulldogs, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And then to get him and to show faith in him, was it Graham Murray that had that side? Yeah. Like it was. A, yeah. Graham Murray had the side. Actually, strange enough, Gus went from Gus, Gus to Graham Murray, Graham Murray yep. in the year 2000. Yep. Graham Murray actually took them to the grand final. He did. Remember. Against the Broncos. Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then Ricky took over in 2001. 2001, yes. Two, no, no, 2002. Two. First 2002. year won the comp because he was the first. 100%. Yeah. What, did you think it was a bit harsh on Graham Murray to sort of move on? Like it was a great roster. Yeah. Um, I think, I think there was a lot of things working around that, that made it uh, unfold the way yep. it did. Yeah. I and mean, that's, that's what happens in footy. We don't know the full stories. Yep. Yep. Um, so the new era comes Ricky Stewart. I know I've like, I've got to meet a lot of those blokes, you know, Jason Kalis, uh, he was at the Tigers for a couple of years. Uh, Mick Crocker, I did yeah. a couple of tours. He was our, you know, people and culture on, yep. on, on Australian side. Yep. He reckons he's never trained that hard in his life. Yep. He reckons Ricky Stewart's like worth it. It was phenomenal, but it was like train hard, play hard, drink hard. Yep. Is that one of the philosophies that you use? One hundred percent, mate. Yeah. And it was all controlled. I mean, yep. you know, sometimes it got a little bit out of hand in all of those three departments. Yeah. But that was the nature of the beast at that particular period in time. Yeah. But Ricky's philosophy was, as as you just said, let's just go hard at these guys and see what they got. Yeah, and we had some amazing athletes there. We had the Wings, we had the Ricketsons, we had the Fiddlers, we had the Morleys, we had Rock Crockers, we had all those fellows who were so much so, mate. That <clears throat> one of the things that we used to do, you remember the old beep test? Yep. We used to go to ES Marks Field there, and all of the forwards, I'd put them on the lanes there of the track there. Oh yeah, yep, yep. And we would do the beep test. And I would stop them at level 14. Really? Every forward was able to do level 14. Wow. And it was just a, an amazing group of followers. And for people at home, level 14 is massive. Like massive. How, how many shuttles do you reckon that would, like that, that'll be a while too. It, it, it is, yeah. What people do now is what they call the yo-yo test. And it yep. sort of skips those first. It does. Like it goes from level one to five Start to nine. Right. Yeah. yeah. Cause but level 14 in most, um, in most of the elite teams, That's unbelievable. it was only a handful. It was only a handful could do it. And your whole forwards the could whole do forward it. whole forward pack could do it. How was Brian Fletcher? 
Fletch was a character as he is now. Yeah, because he's um, he's one of the funny blokes. I oh, love. yeah, yeah. No, but they said he trained hard, and Fletch did train hard. Yep. Um, and Fletch probably um, be the first to admit he could have been so much better than he was. I mean, he really? was a great. He was a great player. We played for Australia and New South Wales. I know. Yeah. But Fletch was just unbelievable and a big. As you know, he's a so big, big man. Yeah. He's a monster. But um, but the Ricky Stewart stories are beyond, mate. They, you probably heard. Well, Mick may have told you one about. Said to ask you about one of the hundreds. How many hundreds did you do in one day? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that story. Uh, I'm not sure if it's been embellished or dimensions kicked <laughs> in between, mate. But um, I can verify that we definitely yep. used to do 50 100s back to back. So back to back. So, but what we do, mate, there'd be a line of two, a line of one. Yep. First line to go. So they were having two to one work to restoration. Yep. But they had to cover the 100 in 18 seconds. That's, that's quick. Very, everyone, the whole yeah. line. Jesus. But they did that 50 times back to back. So so what you're saying is they do that. So that's what, 50 minutes of work? 50 minutes of work. Non-stop. Jesus. And each. Five oh, Ks. Like, yeah. Imagine if like, just with the times now, imagine you said to your boys now, like say we're at the Tigers or when you're at Penrith. Right, boys, we're doing 50 hundreds back to back. How do you think they'd handle now, especially with all the GPS stuff they do and the the, the high performance people in Death Get All is one of them. They probably <laughs> wouldn't let you do it anymore. They'd lose their mind, wouldn't they? They, they would. They say, "What you know? What the hell do you think you're doing, mate?" And then so so was that is that all you did that day, or did you just go and do more stuff? Oh after? no, that that'd be at at the end. Yeah, would have done. Oh, so that's after after you've already done heaps of stuff. Yeah, yeah. there'd be other days when we'd attack. We either some days we'd fatigue them and then do some ball work. Yep. And then the other days it'd be ball work and finish off with that. Wow, that's yeah, it was pretty tough. And if they didn't get the eighteen seconds, would it be all right back to zero, or that doesn't count? But they just make they get they there. Just get there. They just get just there. found a way. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. unbelievable. And then we spoke about Gussie with his motivation. How was Sticky? Because obviously first time coach. Same, same. Mate. Oh, really just good. Unbelievable enthusiasm, exuberance. Everyone believed in him because he yep. was he's authentic. As you know, there's, mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's, he's probably one of the most authentic real people I've ever met. Yeah. One of my very close friends, I'm pleased to, to say. Yeah. Um, but he brought something very special to the play. Yep. And like I said, we had some good players oh. and he got the, the, the Morley's on side oh. and he got the Freddy's on side. Have, have you got any stories about Morley? Because I, mate, as a kid, just watching Morley <clears> play was just, oh. It was, a, it was a treat, would you, to see him in the sheds when yep. there was a big game on. And he knew there was a big game on. Mm -hmm. The forwards would be in, in a huddle, get ready to go. And all of a sudden, he, you just see a different look on, and his eyes would roll around. And yeah. oh, you thought, he's on the night today. Oh, you know? wow. And then from the kickoff, this is what uh, Sticky's philosophy was. From the kickoff, we try and kick off. Yep. And from the kickoff, they go up and they jam for the first three or four tackles. So just go, just shot out of a cannon. Killed them. Yep. And the other mob knew that we come to play every time. Yep. So, um, but yeah, Moz was that like, and there was, sometimes you'd hit him that hard. You'd see him change sides of the ruck and all that sort of stuff. Oh, they say they wouldn't back it up the kickoff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What about, so that was a really good rivalry with the Bulldogs, that, that little era, wasn't it? Yes. Yep. How was Moz in the sheds before those games when he, when he was coming oh, up against yes. the dogs? Same, mate. Very quiet. He was, you know, unassuming yep. and wasn't a big talker and all that sort of stuff. Um, but he, everything was action yep. with, with Moz here. And then speaking of our man, Freddie, you know, everyone loves Freddie. Um, one of the great, one of the, if not the greatest leaders in, in NRL, how was like, how was coaching, like being there in the back end of his career compared to the start when he first come to the Roosters? Yeah. Well, that's a really, that's a great question, mate. Yeah. Because Freddie was a reluctant leader. Yep. He come as, uh, I suppose the name with, with Maddie Singh, mm -hmm. let's, uh, turn this joint around and, yep. and Freddie, in all sorts of reasons, he he was a, a born leader, but he didn't really want to take things by the throat. Yep. But as he got older, he was my best ally. He was the coach's best ally. Yep. If we were going to do some hard work, he jumped the fence and say, "Let's go." He just clap his hands together, "Let's go, boys!" Mm -hmm. And he'd drive it. He'd really? drive the whole yep. thing. Yeah. It's, it's, he's big on standards. Oh, like, 100 percent. Even just like I remember being in camps with him, little things just like if we say both feet over the line, both feet over the line, yep. not. One foot. Like, yep. that's something that I always remember with Freddie. And, it, and it, you know, you take it back to our club. Yep. If the coach says you got to do it. Yep. 
don't just go on the line, go behind it. Exactly. And that's exactly. just, and that's Lee's leadership that he's put onto me a yep. couple of times. So yep. Yep. how was he, but in the back end, like are those oh two oh three oh four? Cause yeah, well, it's, it's a funny thing, but we, um, we had a chat to him because he had one sort of really quiet year yep. and everyone thought that he'd, he'd probably, when was that? When was that? I'm trying to think, mate, it was probably, um, uh, cause I think he came in 94, maybe the late nineties, yep. you know? And, and Gus and I just had a yarn because Gus left in 99 when Graham Murray took over, I think in mm -hmm. 2000. Well, so it must've been the late nineties. Yep. And we just said to him, mate, you know, what happens when you've been in the game a long time? There's a couple of things you got to take care of, yep. a bit of business you got to take care of. Your talent never leaves you. That's it. Your, your ability and your attitude will never leave you. There's the things that we could probably improve a bit. Yep. Can be your, your strength, your speed, yep. agility. Just work on a couple of those physical things. Yeah. And magically, it sort of clicked him into to gear again. Really? And yeah. he started to fire up. And through those 2000s, he was, it was enormous. amazing for us. Well, you remember, he come, remember the Origin Centre SOS to him? Yeah, I that's think, right. Was and it, he scored that day, didn't he? Charge down yeah. in Freddie fashion, the yes, bugger. Yes, yes. Um, so with the Roosters as well, in, in 95 or 96, Gussie. So he's got a huge role with the Super League. Was he still coaching you guys at that period? Uh, 96. Yes, he was. Yes. How did, how was his, as a coach that period, like his focus from, cause he did a lot of the negotiations for the Super League. He did. Was he at training a lot of the times or was he always on the road? And cause you, the Rooster stayed in, in what was the ARL now NRL. So yep. Yep. how was he in that period of time? Well, mate, he was, he was always focused on the job at yep. hand. Yep. Um, it was a funny thing every now and then because in those days it was basically just him and I. Yep. Uh, he was the coach and I was the trainer. Mm -hmm. there, there would be the odd thing we used to laugh about it. He'd ring and uh, there was a training session on it. It Mark's yep. field schedule. And he'd say, you got something from this afternoon? I'd say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, why? He said, uh, you got them. I'll see you tomorrow. And that was it. Oh, at least he's got the trust in you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So, so I ran the whole session and that was it. But mate, no, he's, um, attention to detail and everything he did. Yep. Um, and, and during that time, it was a funny time, mate, because you'd particularly the time when there was the two factions working. Yes. There's a super league here and the ARL yep. here. So players were being called away from training to go and talk to the relative bodies and we were all ARL <laughs> and they'd yeah. come back and made the amount of money that they were all being offered. Really? Do you reckon, did you to think? To stay loyal was crazy. Did you think they were lying, but like the amount that they were throwing around? Uh, well, I didn't really think about if they were lying or not, but yeah. You was, probably, did you think, funny. why don't the Super League poach trainers? I know. <laughs> I, was trying, I was putting it out there, but that didn't happen, mate. Oh, mate. What about um when, remember that time, watch it the other day, I've seen a bit of footage on, on the social medias when Gussie got kicked off the sideline. Yeah. Because I think he told, did he tell you to send the message on the field if he blows another penalty, we're taking the whole side off. Yeah, that was the again stories get. I think GST the stories. Yeah, no, but I think the one you were talking about was um, with a uh, cement truck or something. Yeah, like, yeah. But the the one that is with the referee, Gus was sitting up. Or was it Manly? We're yes. Playing Manly. Yeah, you're playing Manly. Yes, that's right. And Manly hadn't been beaten for like fifteen rounds straight. Yep. And we did the proper preparation, stayed at the Manly Pacific, mm -hmm. ready to knock them off, yep. ready to go. He's up in the stands with James Packer. James Packer was with us at the time, yep. sitting there wow. watching the game. And the thing's getting out of hand, you know, and we we wanted this game bad, yep. and he wanted it bad, Gusty. You know? So his motivation just... Oh, uh, ooh, just yep. another yep. level. And this this was all important to us yep. to, to win this game. So anyway, next thing I get a, um, a message, and he says, Ron... Yep. I've had enough for this referee. I want you to go and get Shawnee Garley in front of the referee. He's the tell hooker. him we're yep. going off. The penalties are killing us, you know. Yep. So I've run off, but unbeknownst to me, I'm thinking, oh, how am I going to do this? Unbeknownst to me, he's cracked it and thrown the walkie-talkie down. It's smashed everywhere, so we've lost communication. Oh, so you can't even talk to him now. Can't talk to him anymore. Yep. So I've run out and I've said to Shawnee Garley, hey, Shawnee, Gus has just said he's had enough of this referee. The penalties are killing us. Get the players off now. And Shawnee said, what? Yeah, what? I said, get the players off now. He said, I can't take them up. So you're having a Barney on the field. And anyway, it's uh, as things turned out, the referee count 
Oh, well, the penalty count changed dramatically. Ah, it's funny how that happens. And we won that game. Oh, wow. Because and, yeah. and, that was, you were sort of making a surge, weren't you? Like, because you yeah. were, yeah, I remember hearing Gus talk about that. Yeah. yeah. See, it is funny. You can. Sometimes things They happen. do listen, mate. They do listen. <laughs> um, it, it, it's funny how they listen too. And then obviously, like you just said, when he froze the walkie-talkie, how is it translating some of the messages? Because you've had some, mate, some phenomenal coaches. You go, Sticky. You know, or Artie Beetson, Stick, uh, Artie Beetson, Gus Gould, Graham Murray, Sticky. When they give you a sort of a, because I, I know myself when I'm playing, the coach will give you the, if you're about to go back on, they give you the walkie talkie. It gives you about 4,000 things to remember before you run on. How did you know the right stuff to say to the boys like Freddie or, or when you're cha- like trying to get that message on the field? Yeah, that, that's a, a, a really great question, mate, because yeah. as you know, you can only. Oh, and, mate. And, and the thing is that the coaches, I guess, don't get. They're delivering the message, and by the time you get out there, everything's moved on, and yes. that particular phase of play is gone. But there is, you know, pertinent messages that have to. And be you're delivered. the middleman for the conversation. Yeah. So yeah. what you do do is um, obviously filter it because you yep. want to keep, you want to keep their positivity up. You don't want to mm-hmm. put them into a hole by telling them they're playing shit. Oh, yeah. So I would always go out and I'd deliver the message, yep. but I'd deliver it in a way that was a it was a, a positive spin on the, on the message. Yeah, because they would always be like, F this, F that. Yeah. yeah. And, and you got to just take just a little bit and tell them what they yeah, need. And yeah. yeah, but, you know, convey the message because, the, the, you know, the coach is asking you to do a job. So yep. you got to do your job and you got to say what he wants the yep. message to live in. But the funny part made a, a funny one with Gasp in, in the early days because – Training changed as a result of Gus sending me on the field all the time. Yeah. I got fined like one year, $30,000 or something. Really? 10000 fine, 5000 fine, all that sort of stuff. But he would come into a, a meeting after the game because yep. I'd have to go on. In those days, the trainer was allowed on in offense and defense. Yep. And, and as many it, times as you want. As many it? times as yep. you want. You're staying there all day. Yeah. And uh, he was talking to, the, to the, the squad and he said, and anyway, defense, he said, Ron. I'm not happy with you either. I said, what's wrong, mate? He said, I'll put you down for three missed tackles. <laughs> <laughs> because he'd have me up there behind the line. What did the voice say in the team meeting? With oh, you? Mate, oh, oh, mate. Oh, mate. But it, but it was funny, mate, because you were allowed. You were yep. allowed to sit behind the defense and move people around. Yeah. Which was a bit. It's how you going, but I remember, I remember who was it? Alfie Langer cops a lot of flack. He's the yeah. 14th man all the time, yeah. or was before. You yeah. know, now they're only allowed on four times. Like, y- yes. you got to have a card. Like, yeah. they're like us in the change. you got to that, take your own that's card. That's the blue shirt, mate. Yeah, the blue shirt. Yeah. 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 The, um, the physios and the docs, they can go like, all the time. Go all the time. Yeah. 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 But is it only an attack? Or... Uh, no, if someone's really hurt. Really hurt. Yeah. yeah, you can go on. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, how hard was it when Gus did move on? Because. Yeah, that was, um, the, the transition there was, uh, I think Graham Murray, I had a lot of time for Graham yeah. Murray because he took over. Yep. And Gus had a, a, a lot of time for him as well. Okay, yep. Um, so but, was Graham part of the system already? Um, or they just, not really. Not really, yeah. Not really, mate. Yeah. No. But uh, yeah, Muzz was, he was probably one, again, one of the, the best fellows that you'll ever meet. Yeah, I've heard a lot of and, good raps about and, him. And what he would say, mate, he was one of those players, uh, coaches, sorry, that was a great thinker. Yep. And he would never react on response he'd, he'd think about it so if you yeah. went up to him and said player me anybody and he didn't have an immediate good response yep he'd say uh just leave it with me just leave that with me for a minute and then he'd yeah walk away and he'd come back and give you because he was a school teacher and he knew how to talk okay. to people and all that sort of stuff yeah he was a an amazing man mate and it, the other one for me is with you. So obviously you went full time in ninety with Gus when yep. Gus came in. How was that? Obviously going from you know the two nights a week yeah. to yeah, going to full time. Was yeah, there a big was, difference? But it was a big difference. But full time then we were still uh, I think about the third or fourth club because yep. the Canberra Raiders had started in the late nineties. Yep. And then the uh, Broncos become full time. Okay. And we yep. didn't become full time until about ninety three, ninety four. So you were the third or fourth one to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we uh, but that, as you know, now being a, a full-time football player, it gave you um, access to the players almost as often as you want. Yeah. Not a, not as much then as it is now. Because basically, uh, as you know, again, players are ready. They should be ready 24-7. Yeah, exactly. And because that's what they're contracted to the club. And There's a lot that goes into it. Like back in the day, you hear those stories where they'd, you know, they'd train Tuesday, Thursdays, they'd be off to the pub. 
That's have true. a certain, certain <laughs> amount of schooners. Um, yeah. You just can't do it anymore. No. As you know, it's too yeah. professional. Yeah. Did you notice a big difference in the way you you played the next year when you went from semi-professional to professional? Yeah, yeah. And I've noticed, mate, the transition um, in players yeah. from, let's say, the, the early 90s when most teams were still um, part-time yep. until now, which is, what, 20-odd years ago, mm-hmm. um, the, the athletes are just super now compared to what they were. They're then. unbelievable, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Mate. They're bigger, faster, stronger, more skillful. Yeah, and better nutrition, better education, yeah. you know, the whole, the whole box and dice. And that in that early, again, I use that word transition from semi-professional to professional in the mid nineties, yep. all the teams by the end of the nineties were all pretty well spot on. And you could see the difference you know, yeah. like in their physicality, the way they played and everything else. Well, cause I remember that like blokes like, like I love Spud Carroll and Chiefy, but they were only about 105, 106 yeah, kilos. And you, you look at blokes now, like that is Sulfur Solomon is 130 kilos. Yes. Yes. Like it's just, they looked bigger back in the day, obviously with the big jerseys. Yep. Now they're skin tight. Yep. Completely different. And as you said, it just comes down to professionalism. Yep. So in 2002, Sticky takes over. When that year, did you have that feeling that this is, you know, we've got the team to do it? Yeah, look, it was it was building, and 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 you could you could sense it. Yep. Um, the the camaraderie with the gang was just something special, and we we, we were larrikins, you know, me yeah. too. Yep. I, I was I was part of the the gang, uh, and probably I shouldn't have been, but in those days, <laughs> well, you were allowed to, mate. You could get away with no it. mobile phones, but. Um, yeah, you could you could sense there was something special building, and even in that, the, the, for me, there's a moment in the grand final where it's it's close. Villa Sandy headbutts Freddie. Turning point. It, it, it is has to be the turning point of the grand right. final. All the players will tell you that if you ask any yep. of the players. Yeah, and then, as soon as they saw their captain jammed on the ground. Yep. I've never uh, uh, the biggest one for me was Adrian Morley. It was like they woke the beast. Because not that he was playing within himself, those players are having a great game, yeah, yeah. but he is one of those players just like, I've got goosebumps talking about now. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> like, as, you, as you talk, mate. Oh, I thinking. love it. He's just gone to the next level, hasn't he? It's like, you, you've you touched my leader. Yep. So it's just. Mistake. <laughs> huge. <laughs> he shouldn't have done it. He and, shouldn't have done it. Because they, they were traveling okay. Yeah. Oh, not, not that they had the game in tow, but the whole complexion of the game changed. Mate. Oh, mate. It, it, just, it was just a, a piece of that game that you just go, oh. He yep. shouldn't have done that. Yep, I agree. I agree. How was the celebrations afterwards? Because you're oh. a team, like you said, you trained hard, you played hard, but you also partied hard. Yeah, yeah. That was just next level. I, yeah. I'd never experienced anything like it. So what did you, where did you go? Back to the East Leagues? Back to the club on top of a double-decker bus and went through the streets and, you know, come in and everyone got surfed across the, the crowd onto the stage and all that yep. sort of stuff. And then then we end up, as you do, at the cross and finished up up there and... And then the next day and the day after that, but yeah, it was, oh, it was well deserved. Oh, yeah, I agree. It'd been a while for the Chooks too, hadn't it? Like I had been competition. Yeah. So, yeah. and obviously you're in the next two grand finals, it doesn't go your way. But then after four, I think Freddie retires, doesn't he? He does. We played, what did we do there? We played from 2000, we played four or five grand finals. Yeah, you did. Yeah. And only won that, that, that one. That's and it. I think both of the, the one against Penrith and one against Canterbury, Unlucky. both gettable. We mm-hmm. felt both gettable. Yep. But that, that's footy, mate. Talk to us about the Scott Sattler tackle on Todd Byrne. Yeah. You're yeah. on the, like you've been on the end of some good stuff. This was a. Yeah, just, just a killer. Uh, <laughs> and usually old Toddy would get there. That's it, eh? And, and Scotty found something next to him. And that's what happens. Yeah. That's, and and the rest is history, as they say. And, and then what about 04? Did you know that, like, did you have a feeling that it was going to be Freddie's last year or? Did he speak uh, to you and stick? No, uh, not really, mate. But the club, it hadn't gone in. You, you can't call it decline. Yeah, yeah. But if you have a look, and I remember at one stage there in that last year that Sticky yep. was there, and I looked at the team that we had playing that day. Yep. And there was only Ryan Cross and Fitzy, the only two from the 2002 Grand Final were playing that day. Wow. And that's only two years later. Yeah. That's crazy. That I never knew that. Yeah. Yeah. So they were sort of going through that. Transition period, moving blokes on. Everyone moved on, and then you know, the the better you become, the more you demand, and yeah. the more you're in demand, and yep. you know, away you go, and that's what happened. And and so, 
How long were you at the Roosters till till you moved on? I was there for twenty four. I started in eighty seven with yep. Vita. So yep. I did uh, off season eighty six with Vita, and then I left in two thousand and nine. Yeah. So so you had that first year when Freddie was gone. Yeah, Freddie. Yes. What yes. was the difference there? Did you? Because as we spoke, like Freddie would lead the fitness or those sort of things. Like, did you just lose a, a huge leader, and did other blokes step up? Um, there wasn't too much. To, there was, you know, there was the odd follow, but no, no one liked Freddie to step uh, up. It's and I'm trying to think of, of that time period, mate. I think Chris Anderson coming up to Sticky, yep. um, and Chris did um, a whole lot of different things. You know, mm -hmm. try the no marker and all that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but a young boy he came in too into the the company at 15 years of age. I remember he um. Uh, Boyd Cordner. Yep. He, he come into the the fray one day. And it, the story goes, and it's a true story. We yep. were doing a bit of a uh, scrimmage, not scrimmage, you've done it before, where half the team runs across the field, the other one has pads, and you crash through back yep. and forward, back and forward. And um, his dad opened the door. We were doing it, and he was invited to come and have a run with him. And his dad opened the door and said, go and make a name for yourself, son. Really? And he went out that day and actually snodded a couple of the first grade blokes with his hits in, on the pads wow. when we were playing that game. Did you know it was going to be something special? Oh, yeah, you could tell. Yeah? You could tell. Yeah. He had that real wide frame, didn't he? The big yeah. shoulders. But he was also also like a, a a wise old man when he was 15. He was. I, mean? I played. Actually, you know the funny story? I um, We played 15s, 18s and that together. He was a year younger than me. Yeah. But because he was from the country, he used to stay at my house. So we've had a really good relationship over the years. And, mate, honestly... Never seen anyone prepare like he does. Yep. And for what his body has been through, you'd know, like the knees, you know, the broken jaws, yep. tough. He's yep. one of the toughest I've played with. Oh, yeah. And and he um, he commanded respect from the player. Like, I was lucky enough to do a couple of origins with him towards the end. Yep. But the amount of respect, they, they would, people would just stop and listen, no matter where we were, what we were doing. But he just commanded that sort and of respect. You know, the funny thing with Boydie too, Ronnie, was that he wasn't, he didn't speak too often. No. He was more of an actions man. But when he spoke, you're like, oh. Yep. We're tuned in here. Yep. Yeah, wow. Yep. yep. And only certain only certain few players have that sort of respect in the game. I agree. Yeah. yeah. And, and as we said, Freddie was one of them. Yeah. Um, you know, we just spoke about origin. One of my, as a kid, and I'd love to get your perspective on it. 2005, Joey Johns. Yes. So you lose game one up in Queensland. Noddy throws the intercept to uh, Matty Bowen. Worst night in my life. Joey's just come back, I think. He come back from ACL, broken jaw round one. Yep. Comes back, one game, or I don't even know if he had a game. Stiggy sends a message. What's the difference in camp from game one to game two when Joey comes through the door? Um, you know, that's a... I think again, mate, confidence and belief. Yep. All of a sudden you've got to follow who can do the job. Oh yeah. Not that I'm saying the others weren't able, but he's special, as oh. we all know. You know, Joey was special. Oh mate. So and, and it's funny, mate, I remember in the I'm not sure about time frame or timeline, but there was a time then when Joey actually had to play hooker. Yes. Yep. And Tubes was half back. Half I don't back, know if yep. you remember that. I remember that. Yeah, I do remember that early yeah. days, yeah. But that's funny how the things again yep. move on. Mm -hmm. And Joey become like the man, oh. he was, he was it. He Crazy, was it. wasn't he? Yeah. I remember hearing, I don't know who, who told the story, but someone said the training session, the first ball work session, yep. I think Sticky just, was it Sticky or Gus? It was uh, Gus, wasn't it? Gus. Ooh. Oh no, that was Sticky actually. Sticky, wasn't it? I think it still was Sticky. Yeah. Sticky. What, what year were we talking? Oh five. Yeah. yeah. Sticky just sat back and they reckon it was one of the best ball work sessions they've ever seen. Yeah. Yep. And you know who did it? Joey. Unbelievable. Just ran it. Just ran it, mate. And then with those origin camps, we speak of bonding nights. Yes. How did you control <laughs> all the boys, mate? Because Well, there's a couple of secrets I've got to let go, mate. I'd 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 used to go out a lot with the boys as well. Yeah, but I'd always that. make sure that I was up first up there if there was a time. Yep. Then it, we, we were strict, as you know, we were always strict on starting times, they had to be up in the morning. Hundred percent. But one of my old tricks was to before I went to bed, I would get dressed in my training gear, complete kit. Wow. And lay on the bed, not under the sheets, just on the bed. However you got back in. <laughs> when the alarm went off, 
I'd bowl up and just walk out the door, clean the teeth, wash no, the face. Well, yeah. No, one thing I reckon you forgot there is oh, something you told go. me, your affirmations. Oh, the affirmations. Yeah, the affirmations. A lot of people at home would love to hear this because I love it. Yeah. It's one of my favourites. Well, I, I have an, an affirmation and I, and I sort of think this this gets you ready for the day. Yep. No matter no matter how you're feeling, no matter what day it is, no matter what's happened in your life. Yep. If you look in the mirror, because as they said, the mm -hmm. only man that you've got to yep. aim up to is the man in the mirror. The man in the mirror never lies. That's exactly right. So what we have to do, I, I'll give you a quick shot of what I do. Yep. So I rub my hands together and this is based on a little bit of oh, Eastern medicine. Yes. Because you can feel, if you do it, you'll feel the tingle through you. Yep. But you go, <laughs> I am strong. Oh, feel the tingle there through. I am strong. <laughs> I'm powerful. I'm a winner. I can do anything. And I do that five times. Really? And then to make sure that I'm in tune with loving my fellow man. Yep. Sounds a bit wanky, but it's the truth. Hey. I say love, compassion, peace of mind, little nerve ends. Yep. There. Love, compassion, peace of mind. Love, compassion, peace of mind, little nerve endings up there. So I go out now and give as much love and compassion as I give because you, what you give, you get back. Exactly. And the last thing is I have an attitude of gratitude. So again, I hit the nerve endings around there. Yep. I have an attitude of gratitude. Attitude of gratitude. So I walk out. I'm strong, powerful. I'm ready to face anything. I've got an attitude of gratitude and I'm going to try and give as much as I can to everybody. So I'll hopefully we'll get it back as well. See, that's, that's just a great way to start your day. Oh, that's it. So and you do that every day? Every day. Every day. Even after the bonding nights when you've had a few? Even after the bonding nights. It, it takes literally but, one minute. Because for me, the biggest thing with you, right? So I've seen you... Have what is it? Two bottles of red or whatever the night, you know, at the dinner when we were training, you would be the freshest man the next morning. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And I'm like, how does this bloke do it? I don't know how I do it. <laughs> I actually got it. Like with your sayings, I think someone told me the other day, actually, it's not a problem. It is, solution. It's a solution. We don't have problems. We, we don't have problems. Solution. That's it. That's yeah. it. You've just, it's just your positivity on everything. It's not, don't look at the negative, look at the positive. Yeah. Well, you, would you, I've, uh, there's a whole lot of things that along hot life's highway yep. I've picked up, you know, and the number one thing is, I think that you have a choice mm -hmm. in everything that you do. Yep. The minute you wake up, you've got a choice if it's going to be a good day or a bad day. That's it. You have the fridge, you have a choice if you're going to eat shit food or good food. Correct. You're helping the car, you've got a choice, you're going to have road rage, <laughs> you're going to chill out and plan your day and have fun. Yep. Right. And the other thing is when you walk into a place, keep your eyes up. Because there's nothing to be found down there. Exactly. There's nothing down there. It's all up here. 100%. So if you engage with someone, a quick flicker of eye, quick contact of yep. eye, your brains both go, and you're stimulated, mm -hmm. and you move on in life, and your whole day you're on. It's, it's a funny one. That's something that all the young kids should be told, you know, because yep. a lot of them come mope, work, like moping in the train, oh, we're getting flogged today. Well, you could be digging holes. 100%. Eyes up, boys. And you know what I've said to them? There's a millisecond. Exactly what you said. There's a millisecond between me walking in like that. Yep. Or like that. It's a millisecond. And, and you, I'm on, I'm off here, but I'm on there. It's, that's and, all. And also the other thing is by me watching you walk in with your head down. So, oh, what's wrong with Ronnie today? Well, when you got to run up, geez, that bastard's up again today. Yeah. And, <laughs> I want to be on his level. And it becomes infectious. Mate. It does. It does. It, it, spreads. It, it honestly does. Because if you walk into that, people want to come talk to you. If you walk into that, or we'll just leave him today. Yep. You attract. It's a law of attraction. Is it, you ever read that book? No, I haven't. I haven't. No. The secret. Really? It's about the law of attraction. Well, I'll have to have a look at it. Yeah. Because if you walk into a place and you've got your head up, not up your ass, yep. you've got your head up and you're walking around, you'll attract people. Really? You're not going to attract anybody like that. Head down. No way. Because as you said, no one's going to want to talk to you. At that walking into a room with your head down just shows you that you just want to get to your spot and that's it. Not talking to no one. And the other thing that I, I didn't like about some of the players, I shouldn't say I don't like it. Everyone's got their own. Thing. Oh, yeah. But when they walk into a, a meeting or whatever and they put their hoods on. I hate it. Because you know why? They're hiding. You don't, I don't I want you to. What about, I've got one for you. You know, the new thing I've noticed, like since a lot of people do like development in themselves and that, everyone goes in to shake hands now. Yep. I, I actually like that because a lot of people go, oh, what's he shaking hands? What's he doing? No, well, he's actually acknowledging you. Mm. 
he's not coming in just walking past and you're thinking, oh, what am I doing? Like, is he is he off me or is he on me? Yep. Little, just little things like that. Yep. And would you have been doing that for a Mate, million years? Well, that was one thing you used to always say, morning, like yep. you come up to us, yep. even with your little thumb. <laughs> 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 Can we talk about the thumb? The thumb. What's happened to the thumb? That, that was a... Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember, you know, you know, the funny thing is, I never knew about it until one day we're doing a warm-up drill in Origin. And you, you're going, oh, boys, hands up. <laughs> and I've looked, I've gone, there's something wrong with that, bro. What's happened there? And I remember I grabbed you up and I said, Ronnie, can I have a look at your hand? I still can't remember. what What's happened to it? Well, I was doing a bit of a DIY at home. Oh, yep. Had the four kids in the backyard. My wife was out shopping. Um, I was spreading a bit of timber about that wide. Yep. With a circular saw, a blunt circular saw. And I'd gone to almost the end of it and I thought, oh, I can get that extra bit. So I put my hand down the bottom of the timber here, went to reach for that extra six yep. inches, a jam, jumped up in the air, ran straight across my hand, shot my thumb off. Wow. I, I thought I'd broken it because it was a blunt saw. Oh, okay. And I went, ah, oh, broken my thumb. So a blunt saw you've... Well, it was the, blunt, the, the, the things, because it was not yeah. rolling, it was still going, it was a power saw. Yeah, yep. But I've gone, I broke my thumb. And I've looked down, I haven't broken it, it's gone. Far out. So, and that, that was... Uh, so, so did you have to pick up the little piece and try well, to take no, it and save it? In those days, no mobile. Oh. So I, I, I said to the kids at a pool there, I said to the kids, hey, just stay there for a minute. Dad's got to go and make a quick phone call. <laughs> I went inside, I rang up Dad, because I used to always boy the boy yep. who played wolf. And I said, mm -hmm. Dad, can you come down? I've just cut, chopped my thumb off. He said, yeah, sure, son. I'll talk to you later. Hung up. So I tried again. Dad, I'm very serious. I'm, I'm not, my thumb. not taking a piss here, Dad. No, I thought, oh, I better get outside and see if I can find my thumb. Yep. I thought the kids might be playing with it or something, you know, and um, couldn't find it. And I thought, oh, I know where it is. So I went to this, the uh, safety blade. Yep. And it was jammed up in there. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. So I, I just pulled out, put in some ice, and that was it. Straight to the hospital? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, ah, yeah. You just mentioned phones. That's something I'd love to talk to you about. Social media. Yeah. How different are the, the, the players from now? So obviously you had a lot of those Penrith boys, obviously yes. in your stint with the Ives. Yes. yes. You see them with the boom box and all that sort of stuff. Imagine that in the early nineties at the Roosters when you were there. It wouldn't have happened. It, do you think it's crazy how different like Yeah, and it, but again we gotta understand that. You you too, mate. Even yeah. though you're 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 nowhere near as old as me, but things change. Oh they do. mate, there was no Instagram when I first came to Yeah. First grade. But my pet hate are mobile phones. Yep. My, my pet hate. Or well, do you want to tell people our rule for origin? Yeah. 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 I, I dislike phones. Yeah. We had to put them in the box, remember? We had to. We, yeah. started, we started the rule yep. in origin where every everywhere you went. It was a fine. You had to put, yeah. You had to put your phone in a box, like checking your guns in the old days of the saloon. Yep. And then you pull them out when you come back. And the beauty of that is, particularly when you're sitting at a, a dinner, People that actually talk to each other. Mate, it, the interaction was unbelievable. Yes. You actually genuinely loved each other's company. Yeah. And it was that breath of fresh air. It was funny because no one was like on their phone. No, no. And you'd have a good conversation. Some dinners would go for an hour. Some would go for three yeah. hours. I remember some of the boys were like, oh, I've got to tell me this. Who cares? Like, yeah. And <laughs> you know what I think it is, which is big. Sometimes you, it, it makes people lazy. So rather than sort of make the effort to chat, Oh, this is this is easy. Yeah, I'll just I'll just do this. I'll stay in my own little world. Mm -hmm. But when you're in a team environment, God. your own little world means jack shit. It doesn't exist, mate. It doesn't exist. It yeah, yeah. I think I think it's also also an easy way out. Like, say if you go, all right, Ronnie, I'm gonna we're gonna train tomorrow at eight o'clock in the morning. Well, we're training at eight o'clock in the morning because you're not gonna like you know back in the day you wouldn't be able to go, oh, Ronnie, I'm sick in the morning. Yep. You just show up. Yep. It's an easy way out for me this day yep. and age. That's how I see it as yep. for people. Yep. Yep. But what about, do you reckon, how do you reckon the old boys would have survived with social media? Your oh. types of Crockers and your Freddies, Craig Wings. They'd probably uh, spend a lot of time in the can, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Especially those blokes, wouldn't they? Well, that's, it, it, look, they weren't, they, they were scallywags. They were nice scallywags. They yep. weren't criminals. They weren't yep. bad people. They they didn't, you know, do the wrong thing by people, all that sort of stuff. They were, they were good people. Yeah. But we just had fun. You know, it's, it's, it's different. It just shows you like, and, and you speak to any of the old players, like they used to always say, oh, I don't know how you, like I was talking to, like close with Blocker Roach. 
Yes, would you? I don't know how you play with mobile phones this day and age. Some <laughs> of the, some of the things we used to get up to away from the field. Hundred percent. As you said, we'd be locked up. <laughs> well, mate, my first ever trip. I never remember the Tigers in 1971. I remember I scraped in. You had to play nine of the games that season to yep. go on the end of season trip. And we went to Perth. I just made, played nine. Yep. But I had the likes of all the old hardheads like Gary Leo, mm -hmm. Barry McTagg. Yep. You probably won't even remember any. No. They wouldn't have any of these people. But, um, you know, it was just a different scene. You went yep. over there and no one knew. We were in Perth and no one even knew who the Tigers were. So we just had our own time and no one worried about what was going on there. Blokes will be blokes. Yep. And that's where it's left too. Like no one talks about it. Yep. Unless you have your reunions. Yep. And that's when the little chat comes around. Here. And, and speaking, so of, it should. speaking of reunions, do you enjoy those reunions when you get to catch the boys? I think, like, didn't you have one for the Roosters 02 not long ago? Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah, we did. It's been good, mate, because that chat started um, leading up to that reunion. Yep. And it's now perpetual, you know, we just... Oh, any, so it still goes? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Anything that's going on. Like, there are a few of the boys are going to the the Greeny, Paul Green golf day. There's a, okay, yep, yep. Which a couple of clubs are getting together for. Wasn't that So I noticed yeah. on our chat that, um, you know, some of our boys have been invited to go on. They're all going. That's yep. good. Because it keeps you informed. It oh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, and, it, it, and that's one good thing about mobile phones. Yeah, that's probably... That's that's the great thing about it, is be able to keep in contact with people yeah. like that. But I don't do... Any, anything else, mate. I don't do Instagram. I don't do Facebook. I don't ah, do nothing. You're not missing much, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and then speaking of like, so being a trainer, so you're, like you said, you're one of the 14th men. You're on the field that much. Gussie's give it to you. You missed a couple of tackles. Any of the best sledging you've heard? Have you sledged any players or has any players sledged you for being on the field that much? No, not really, mate. No. No? No. no I, I, I took it as, as personal. Uh, well, my own personal um, way to go about things to never, ever sledge a player. Yep. Because that's not, not my business. Yep. My business is training. I'm, I got, I, how dare I try and sledge yeah, a, yep. a player? So that, that was never in my um, vocabulary. But, um, and most of the players, no, it'd be, it'd be a, a friendly sledge by some of the opposition. Love blokes. Yeah, they might squirt water at me or yeah, come yep. past me. Or, or one of the funniest ones, mate, was um, Peachy. Remember the fullback from Cronulla? David Peachy, yeah. David Peachy. Yep. I was in the defence line when mm -hmm. I shouldn't have been. Uh, <laughs> Gus's tactics. Yeah, Gus's. So <laughs> I've, I've run through behind him and all of a sudden the ball, ball went loose. Yep. We kicked it forward loose and Peachy's picked it up and I'm sort of just behind the line. He runs Gee, straight at me and sidesteps and me mucking around. You know, yeah, yep. But that sort of thing. Yep. Was, uh, yeah, just friendly banter most of the time. And then obviously, yeah, obviously the banter is funny. Like I know when I see blokes, if I see you, I go, hey, Cougar, I'll just yeah. muck around, take, yeah. the, take the mickey. Yeah. You've been to a couple of clubs. You were at that, I think you were at the the part of the, the five-year plan for Gussie at Penrith, weren't yes. you, under Ivan? Yes. Did you, you know, I know Gus said five years, it's taken seven. Yep. But you look at what they've built there now. Like they are first Amazing. three Amazing. or second three Pete, but it, first in the You hate to say, mate, but it's a dynasty. It's to, it. to create a dynasty is something special. You know, and it, mate, they looking stronger than ever to go oh. for a four Pete. Did you feel at the time that you were building something there? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I tell you a, little, a funny story. Not a funny story, but a, an interesting story. Mate. I think it was in the third year we were there. Uh, maybe, let's see. yeah, it was, I think it was the third year we were there. Yep. Um, we limped into the playoff. We beat the Roosters out at the, um. Field goal, Jamie Soward. That's it. I remember that. And we were, we were one off playing the semi-final to go into the, the GF. Yep. Um, and we end up getting beaten. So we didn't, didn't go to, to play the, the grand final. But at the end of that particular season, we rolled around with, you know, we didn't have all the best players, but we yep. just had people who wanted to play for each other. You know, it's like a good team. Yeah, just, and he had a great feel. Everything was rolling. And we, like I said, we beat the Roosters to get into the semifinal. Yeah. And they had a great side. But what happened was, at the end of that season, we had 15 surgeries. Far out. So just about everybody who played in that final series was, buckled. was carrying something. Far out. Yeah. So then, how was the next year going into the preseason? Because normally... You only have about a handful, not 15. We, we, I think we got a pretty slow start. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Mate. Yeah. And then, so, cause you would have had the likes of James Fisher Harris. Yep. You know, Moses Leotas. Yep. yep. They were all Isaiah Yo. Yeah. 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 Yo. What a, what a champion he's become. Mate, he's the best lock 
One of the best locks I've ever seen. And, mate, he's an example of someone who was not a standout. Well, he was a back rower, wasn't he, when he first come? Yeah, and just did his work, did his work, did his work. work. And I I look at him now, he's, he's... He's the linchpin behind all of that. Oh, he oh, for me, he's the glue. Like, yep. like I know Cleary's just like Cleary's a superstar. Let's he's next Joey in waiting, whatever. But the the one that makes it easier for him is Isaiah. Yep, because he defends from the middle. Yep, he carries the ball like a, oh, a pop, a he's, prop. His carry is unbelievable, mate. Because and the hard thing about him is you don't know if he's going to pass, step back and inside. Yeah, he's so like. Yep. So instead of putting heaps of pressure on him, sometimes you're on your back feet. Yep, just no. to see. How far they've come, mate. Ah. Oh. You reckon they can do four or more? Um, I'd be look, you know what? You can't say no. That's it. But what I have noticed, Woodsy. Yep. Already, what is it, round four or something came up? Round five this week. Round five. I think the game has got a lot closer with all the teams yep. now. You know, on any given week, someone can roll someone else. It's like that, isn't it? Because I think the majority of them have got a Fairly good roster throughout yep. now. Um, but those that are going to come at the pointy end, as we know at the end, will be the normal teams, I think, that we yep. we would assume will be there. I, I like the look of the Bronx again. I think they're good. Once they get Hass back, they get, you know, yep. Adam Reynolds more, Walsh yep. has got to come back. Yep. Yep. They'll be right. They're yep. just they're just flying under the radar. And our Tigers are going good, mate. Yeah, I'm happy for them, aren't they? Like, isn't it good to see? I think for anyone who asked me and wanted to, Wanted any opinion for the last two or three years? I've always said we've got a really good roster there. Yeah, but they're just finding a little bit of momentum there. You know? But you know what it's like when your confidence is low, Ronnie. Like you could train ten times harder, things don't come off, and then you just get more and more in that hole. Yep, we're starting to see a bit of what we've been told. Yes, which is really good to see. And yep. like for me, Happy Coruscant, like, and uh, what a player! He's amazing, mate. And amazing. then, mate, I'm a big fan of the Stefano. Stefano's a great player. He's got all the ingredients to be a, a rep player Ooh. and a long-term rep player. I, I think they, they tried it at Origin. I don't think they even, you know. They didn't give an opportunity. Anything. They haven't seen anything. Yeah, he's, and I reckon he'll be on the radar after and, the way he started. And Bull of a fullback, mate. He's, oh, freak. He's next level. It, like, you've been in around it. He just looks like he glides. It looks he does. like For me, he's, like, it, it annoys me because it looks like he's got no effort, but you can tell he's putting the effort in, but. Yep. He, you're right. He glides and he just, he just turns up. Yeah. He's he, like. A mist is coming. He just, he turns up. And it's amazing. So how, you were at the Tigers for three or four? Six years. Six, six years at the back end. Yeah, I started, Ivan. You were there Ivan, Ivy, yeah, When Ivan had to have his rest, he went yep. to the Tigers. Yep. And then I went and joined Ivan there. That was in 18, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. 18, yeah. yeah. And then obviously had Madge. Yes. Yep. Yep. And you, then Tim was for last year. Last, and then Benj yeah. this year, yeah. So, and then obviously, um, one thing I'd like to ask you, Tiger Town Doco. Yes. How was that? Mate, it was, um, it, yeah, it was a bit, I didn't know how it was all going to unfold. Yep. They just said, oh, look, we're going to do a bit of a doco. I didn't know what sort of doco it was going to be, yep. how big it was going to be. Mm-hmm. And, and they just um, interviewed me about a couple of things to do, obviously, with training and yep. all that sort of stuff. Um yeah, I think it had it had mixed reactions, didn't it? I think that it, Doco. I think it was just a an easy shot at certain people. Yes. At yeah, at the time. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people, yeah, yeah. Obviously Justin Pasco. Um I got along really well with Justin and you know, I've never really had a problem with him. He yeah. was always really good to me. Yeah. But yeah, he copped a lot of flack, didn't he? Getting his guns out, a little bit of dye in the hair. <laughs> I love Gene him up about it. <laughs> And he, he would laugh about it too. Mate. Oh, yeah, no, he's... No, oh, he's a good fellow. Oh, he's a good fellow, mate. Obviously, and then... So your time gets cut short, obviously, at Tigers. Like, you were doing transition role, weren't you? Yeah, I was doing uh, a bit of pathway stuff yep. last year and also working with um, Noddy, with the, the, the women's girls yep. team. Yeah. Yep. How was that? How's the difference with the girls to, to male? Mate, absolutely eye-opening. Yep. And refreshing. They're two words that I could really readily use because... I wasn't the main man there. I was just assisting with little bits and pieces. Yep. But I would go to their weight sessions, mm-hmm. for example. And, mate, all they wanted to do was get better every single session. So They good, just wanted to get better. They wanted to learn. They, they were bright-eyed and bushy-tailed on, on every really? session. Then they go out into the field. Same thing. 
how can I get better? What can I do? Bright eyed, bushy tail, great, you know, great demeanor. They're like, um, they're like sponges, aren't they? That's what I've heard. Perfect. And when I speak to them, mate, they ask me a million questions and I'm sort of like taken back by it a little bit. I'm like, oh, and they actually love their footy. They do. It's, it's crazy, isn't they it? They do. And let me tell you, they're damn good at it. I was going to say, did you think it would grow to what it is now? Oh, it's, that's going to be the next big thing, mate. Because like, imagine saying, obviously in the nineties when you're, when you're, the, oh, uh, sorry, you're training at the Chooks. Would never have. Imagined it. It's crazy how far it's come, isn't it? Although you probably know my, one of my daughters. Yes. Yes. Yep. She um, played for Australian Rugby League. Yep. And in that time, you couldn't do it now, but she was playing Australian Sevens Rugby Union at the same time. Well, they, they had no competition, so they were allowed so to jump allowed over, to weren't jump they? Over. So yeah. That, she, that was the early introduction I had when she played Origin for, and then she went to play for the Australian yep. team then. But so. But I could see things starting to come through. Yep. And one of our great mates, so probably uh, my wife's and one of my wife and I's great mates is Tasha Gale. Oh, yeah, yep, yep. Legend. And, yeah. And we um, we uh, saw a lot of her early games and all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Because she, you know, she was a pioneer. Pioneer. I think the, comp was it the 18s competition is yeah, named after her. Yeah, called Yep. Yeah. 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 She's also a commentator for Fox Sports. Yeah. So, so I'd, I'd, games. I'd seen the, the early, the infancy. Yep. Infancy of um, the girls' game. Yeah. Then I saw it through my daughter. But now, oh. Mate, the quality's ridiculous. Unbelievable like, quality. The quality from 10 years ago yep. to now. I remember watching. I remember watching a young Jess Surgis make her debut on the wing yep. for New South Wales. And to see her now and how yep. far she's come, yep. it's, it's, mate, bloody crazy. One thing about the Tigers, I remember watching a game. You played against Manly at Brookvale Oval. Yeah. The cameras, I don't think you knew the camera was on you. It was on you before the game. Uh -huh. And you brought this box out. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here, but go The on. magic dust. <laughs> oh, yes. The magic dust. Yes. They come out and had one of the best games I've seen them play. Well, there's always a story. What's the background on it? The again? story is this. Again, we had a terrible, terrible run down at Brookie. Yep. Just couldn't win for love nor money, no matter what happened. We'd go down there and get... Sides go through this. <laughs> we went through it. So I said to Ivy... I said, look, mate, we've got to do something special here. Mm -hmm. I said, you're not going to get them any fitter, faster, stronger. You're not going to give them any more technical stuff. You won't get them better skill. But yep. the one thing that we can work on is their energy. Let's convince them mm -hmm. that they're going to be energized more than they've been in a long time. Yep. So Ivy said, knock yourself out, do what you like. So I've got them just before the game. And I got all this, um, I got my wife to get this gold sparkle stuff in a box and I put energy box on it so that players could see it and they were just about to go and I said all right boys there's going to be something here that we're going to have over the top of this other mob today we're going to have a lot more energy and I've thrown this stuff <laughs> <laughs> they're all pissed themselves laughing mate didn't it work it did, it did. I think you were up like 28 nil at half time strange things happen mate yeah it's a game of motivation isn't it well it is it is everything's as you know all about mate motivation. it's crazy it's it's honestly you just, you can prepare as well as you want, but if it's not between the years game day, it's all over. You missed the jump. Yep. yep. All right. So you've been in the game for so long and you've been a trainer. Who is the best trainer you've trained? It's, Ooh, that's. Well, it's a tough this, one. I know, but. Yeah, you know what? I couldn't, I, I, I'd like to give you one, but I can't. Well, what about say at each club? Who's. Yeah. Well, even, even along the way, I. I think that, uh, you know, you go back to the early days, you know, your Craig Wings. Yep. And even Finchie, I know Finchie and, and, um, Junior Pierce. Yeah. All those sort of, but we had a, um, going back to Finchie for a minute, we had the, you'd probably get yourself the 70, 40. Yep. Rectangle. And you had to do 15 seconds, yeah, 15 yep. seconds, 15, 15. Is that and where it, you sprint then jog? Yep, sprint, yep. jog. So it's yep. 15 seconds sprint, 15 second jog, 15, 15. One lapse a minute. Yep. And if you got to level... 10, you're going okay. Mm -hmm. Finchy and Ju Junior at different times got to level 20. Jesus. Which is unheard of. That's crazy. Yeah. That so, so, and, and let's go back to Craig Wing and, mm -hmm. and Luke Ricketson. Yep. Freddie was always fit um, in that game. And I suppose if you go to the modern day fellas, um, gee, we, I, I, I can't really name them. There's too many of them, mate. Well, then how has the training evolved from back to the start to now? Like, cause, and over the periods, like I know early nineties, you two nights a week, yep. then you get professional, yep. you know, I know when I first come to grade, there was no GPS. Yep. Now there's GPS. They yep. track everything. Yep. 
It's so different now, isn't it? It is. It is. And I think to a certain extent, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not being a dinosaur here, yep. but you can't tell your heart and your head and your lungs that it's over. Yep. GPS will tell you that. And that's something I would love to get off you. Like a lot of the time, the, whether it's the physios or high performance, they're a little bit worried. Oh, we've hit the mark. Yep. Yep. Sometimes you just need the mental toughness, yep. don't you reckon? Oh, there's no substitute. And the games that really count and the moments that really count is when your head's, your head's pumping, your heart's pumping, you know, your lungs are burning. Yeah. Who's going to find that little bit? Who's going to find it? And you know? you know that you've put them in the trenches for those moments. Yes. You know that they can handle they it. They can do it. They Whereas, do it. all right, what about in the game? All right, the GPS has hit the marks. Do we take them off the field now? Yep. And, and again, you know, without being critical of GPS, I think, you know, I think all the technology that we've got has enhanced yep. the, um, the, the, uh, the longevity of a lot of players. Yep. Um, because they're well looked after now. And yep. we're not doing crazy things because yeah. admittedly we used to do crazy things. Oh, way you like my, but I think, um, you know, we get a lot of what they call red flags. And I've seen it so many times. The, the, you know, you see the list for training. He's red flag, he's red flag. And I say, they're all training. You know, there's a classic example where, um, names withheld, but we were at, uh, state of origin. Sticky was the coach yep. and we were, uh, at Cogra Oval training, the, the origin team. Yep. And we worked out that we had to train hard to, 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 to get this series. You yep. know? So we went out and started trying, and the, um, the, one of the high performance people come out and said, you know, it's too much. You got to ease down now and take him off and take him off. And Ricky said, tell that. Yep. To see ya. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> go, go and find something else to do for Correct. a while. And, but sometimes you can't train an origin team like you do a club team. That's it. It's, it's, it's a different standard, isn't it? You've got to take them to somewhere deep, somewhere dark, <laughs> Mate, somewhere nasty. And, you know. Like speaking of, that was the hardest training I've done was the 14 series. Remember that? Like, yes. We went to Coffs yes. and... We did some big days, oh. man. Remember that day I got you out of bed? Were you with that one? Yep. Yes, nice and early. <laughs> <laughs> one o'clock. Yep. It? Didn't miss us. <laughs> but that's what makes it, man. Like, yeah. And then we all did it together. There was no vests on. I, I only think the GPS things are good for when you come back from injury. Yep. Just to know, like, all right, you've got your axles, you've got yep. your high speeds. Yep. You're yep. ticking those boxes, yep. those markers. Yep. But like you said, some blokes would come in and, oh, I've had a crap sleep. I'm going to write really, really poor because yep. I want to get out of training. Yeah. Mate, it's so easy to do. Yeah. You've just got to pull your head in and just yeah. get out there. That's it. Just get the job done. That's it, and mate. I, I've always said, you know, people say, oh, gee, I've, players will say, gee, I feel ordinary today. I'm going to do it. Just get the job done today. Come in, smile and Just face. get the job That's done. That's it. That's it. But on the days when you feel good, shoot for the stars. What about if you're not feeling good game day? Do you have that day off? Exactly. You've got to train your body to do it no matter what. That's it. No matter what. So, all right, talk to us. So we talked a lot about footy. What's the big cougar get on, get up to away from footy? Um, I've probably been pretty much just with family and all that sort of yeah. stuff, mate. Yeah, I've got 12 grandkids now, as you know. Well, you've got four kids and then you've got 12, 12 grandkids. grandkids. Wow. Yeah. So they, that keeps you going. But I, I think, you know, it's like with footy, mate. Footy takes up a lot of it your does, time. It does, doesn't it? And the thing with footy that people need to understand, although they do, is that you don't have a Monday to Friday. There, You can play on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you never really have a weekend where you can plan things like weddings and all that sort of stuff. You miss it so much. Yeah. The, um, the, the modern day players are, you know, they, they have plenty of downtime and show yep. that, so they should. Yep. Um, because that's all about recovery. Yep. But, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot to, to get, get on with your life besides footy. That's and it. I think, you know, and in the answer to your question, I think I just do the normal things, mate. I'll go out with friends and just get around. That's it. There's just get around. That. Nothing. Making up for the time that you've uh, missed around. Yeah. And it's probably good to see your, your 12 grandchildren whenever you can. Yeah. 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 Getting those opportunities. Yep. I spoke to a mate. He said, the uh -huh. big fella likes to travel. Yes. So where do we travel to, Ronnie? Well, we've been really fortunate of late. Yep. Um, uh, my wife and I, uh, we've, we've got a friend who's got a super yacht. Okay, nice. Um, the super yacht is uh, super 
super yacht. So how big are we talking for? Uh, 70 meters long. 70 meters? Three quarters of a footy field. Jesus Christ. So we've been lucky enough to link up with this um, on two occasions, the last last year and the year before. Yep. Uh, first year we linked up, flew to Rome and jumped on and did the Amalfi Coast. Oh, wow. That was about three weeks. And then uh, last year we flew to Istanbul. Um, how was he? How was Istanbul? Did you spend any time there? Outstanding. I've heard that's a great, yeah. really good food. We deliberately stayed there. Oh, great food. Yeah. Right? We did the Turkish baths and all those little yeah, tricks that wow. you're supposed to do. But we spent three days there. But Istanbul's a great place. Yep. Um, and then we did the Greek Isle. So oh, that's a, that's been a very, dream. look, honestly, blessed. My whole life's been blessed in so many ways. Yep. I've, uh, I've been able to be a part of this, um, as we call the, the greatest game of all. Oh, it's the best. But I've been lucky enough to be part of it, mate, since... Um, 53 years. 53 years, yeah. So, you know, I've been blessed in so many ways. Yep. I am fortunate in so many ways. I, every day, I appreciate what I've got. It's so um, good, mate. So, yeah, that's how we... And, and then one last question. Where to now for Ronnie Palmer? Does he still want to be involved in footy? Are you happy with what you've done? What... Yeah, I look, you know, I'd, I'd like to be involved in football in some capacity. It's um, yep. It's a little bit... Difficult, I, I suppose, now to to go back to the coal face. Although I, I know I could do it. Oh, mate, for sure but, you could do it. But the thing is, there's everyone has their moment, and mine has moved on. I've I've got to ride off in, hey, mate, <laughs> into reckon, the sunset. But I not reckon quite. You've, still, you've still got some good years in those <laughs> legs, mate. Yeah, but uh, no, I I just like to be involved in some some way um, to to ride. to write a job description. I don't know exactly what it is. Oh, but for me, it's but, also having you around the group, like. It's what you bring. It's not just what you do. Yeah. Like you've got that, the, the culture you've been around, you've seen great teams, you know, and yeah. for me, it's the positivity. A lot of kids this day and age struggle with coming in and being upbeat. Yep. And that's something that I reckon would rub off from yourself, mate. Yeah. 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 No, and I, and I, I, I totally agree with you, mate, without giving myself a rap. I oh, think, please, I think mate. that's, I think that's what I can easily bring yep. to any organization. It doesn't oh, matter. 100%. What that's so, it. And, but. You know, for the time being, I'll wait and see what comes my way. Oh, that's it, mate. Well, we, I hope if someone listens out there, I'm going to put your name up to anyone that <laughs> I speak to now because, mate, honestly, I've, just knowing that I was going to come interview you today, I was happy and I was upbeat. And I was saying to the people upstairs, mate, this chat could go for three hours if we had to. <laughs> but, mate, I, I can't thank you enough for coming in, Ronnie. Yeah, mate, I really hope a club picks you up. And uh, I appreciate you doing this for us, mate. Really, thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, big Go man. Ahead, appreciate you? it, Ronnie. Thank you, mate.